Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I hope that you are very very well. My name is Lizzie and today I have some good old recommendations for you. It has been a long time since I've sat down and just done a regular recommendations video. I don't know when my last one was. I think it might have been for By Visibility Day. Never knowingly off brand. Never knowingly off brand. But this month is LGBT plus history month in the UK. So I thought I would celebrate by sharing some book recommendations with you. Now last year for LGBT history month, I did a historical fiction video and a classics video. So I thought this year I would bring you some non-fiction. I have read honestly a woefully small amount of LGBTQ non-fiction, um, which isn't, maybe the best way to start a recommendations video. Um, this year I felt I'd read enough to be able to recommend some to you, to like, you know, pick, pick out some to recommend. Um, if you've got any recommendations for me, preempting the end of the video, then do let me know. It's something I would want to read, read a bit more on as well. Not all of the books I'm gonna mention are specifically history books, um, but all of them incorporate LGBTQ history in some way or another. So without any further ado, let's get to the books. First of all, and this is the, probably the most famous book on this list, which is why we're going to talk about it first, and that is The Transgender Issue by Sean Fay. This book is all about trans right and trans liberation and about how we got to where we are today, where we can go next, and how it benefits all of us, not just trans people, but also with an obvious emphasis on the struggle that trans people face in our modern society. It's brilliantly written, really engaging. So some non-fiction books, you do feel like you're sort of going, okay, it's time to read now. I'm gonna sit down and concentrate. This is one you just wanna pick up and keep on reading. Most of the book isn't necessarily dedicated to history. And the bits that are, are so good at getting you to sort of rethink your own understanding of that history and of how we got here as a community. It's a very vital book. It's very clear and sets out the very radical ways that we need to change as a society if we are ever going to be able to support our trans siblings. The next one is a little bit more local to me, and that is A Little Gay History of Wales by Daryl Leeworthy. What's really good about this book in particular, this is the sort of book you would go in and expect to be about famous queer Welsh people, um, but it's very much not. He's very clear this is not about the famous few, this is about the everyday lives of mostly gay men in the last century or so in Wales. It is very much a gay history rather than an LGBTQ history, the other letters didn't really get much of a look in, um, and on one level that kind of makes sense because the sources, the often primary sources, um, in terms of like police records and things were very much skewed towards gay men rather than any other letter of the acronym. But it is a really great insight into what life is like for day-to-day -day queer people growing up in Wales in the last century. And it brings us right up to modern day as well, tracking the history of campaigning and rights activism in Wales as well. The next one, now I've shouted about this book a lot, especially when I first read it, I could not stop going on about it. It's brilliant, you should all read it. The Hidden Case of Ewan Forbes by Zoe Playden. This is part biography, part history, and Ewan Forbes was a Scottish baronet who was assigned female at birth and from a young age lived as a man and was referred to by male pronouns and legally changed his gender to be male way back in like the 30s. Um, and he was taken to court by his cousin because he was in line to inherit a male only title and the court found in his favour and then it was put under lock and key and has only just been sort of uncovered in the story of this book. Alongside Ewan's story we get a sort of overview of trans history in the UK going like chronologically along with his life uh, again, leading right up to sort of 90s and early noughties. It's a really good way of humanising that history, bringing it back to very real people and their stories, and a whole side of British history 
that I had never heard of. So you should, everyone should, again, everyone should read this book. It really, really opened my eyes. And I think a lot of people have never heard this story. And it's a story that deserves to be told. The next one is less a book about history and more from history. And that is Your Silence Will Not Protect You by Audrey Lord. So this is the title of a collection of her work. Um, I think it was the first like, UK collection was called this. Basically anything by Audrey Lord. Just go read Audrey Lord. <laughs> Audrey Lord is an icon of feminist campaigning and often discussed the intersection of her gender and her race and her sexuality and how that relates to her own personal liberation. Attitudes towards queer women within the second wave feminist movement really, really varied and shifted a lot over that time period. Um, and you get, really get to see that reflected in her writing. And it's just a really great way to experience that intersectionality by a truly, truly fantastic writer. And the last one, a little bit out of left field. This is the least history one of all of the history books in that it's a self-help book. And that is Queer Body Power by Essie Dennis. I read this very recently. I really, really enjoyed it. And it is about body positivity for queer people. And it does include a lot of queer history, which I was very surprised by. It talks about a lot of the history behind queer fashions, behind things like tattoos, and how the queer community have presented themselves at different times in the last century, roughly. It's a very hands-on approach to history in that it is specifically about how that aspect of history has brought us to where we are today, which all of the books I've mentioned have touched on to an extent. This one kind of does that the most. The history element of this book is much more about the history of a heteronormative society's relationship with queer people and with their bodies, which is very interesting. Loads of layers to unpack and it's put really succinctly and clearly here. Why couldn't I say that succinctly? I couldn't say it properly. As always, I'm gonna finish off my recommendations video with a few books from my TBR. So first of all, Queer Power by Dom and Ink. If you don't follow Dom and Ink on Instagram, you definitely should. He is an artist and his illustrations are gorgeous, as you can tell from the cover of this book. I have actually started reading this book in that it's the sort where there's like a page. Oh look, it's Cheddar Gorgeous. I've opened it on Cheddar Gorgeous's page. There's a page for each person. It's not one where you would sit down and read it from start to finish. It's definitely one to like dip in and out of, read the odd page on someone. Um, but yes, lots of different queer people uh, through history or modern day as well. Um, a really good, really good mix of people. Next up, this one's more of a classic history book, and that is The Wedding Heard Round the World by, and there's a lot of authors, uh, so I'm gonna read them out to make sure I get it all right. Michael McConnell with Jack Baker as told to Gail Langer Kowalski. That's a lot of names. <laughs> this is about the fight for marriage equality in the USA, and according to the blurb, the first legally binding same-sex wedding in the United States was in 1971. That's amazing. So I'm looking forward to reading this and hearing about the history behind that historic wedding. And finally, We Can Do Better Than This by a whole selection of people. Many, 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 many people in this book. This is an essay collection on LGBTQ plus rights. Um, some celebrities, some activists, all sorts of different people included in here. I love a good essay collection. Uh, 35 essays to be specific, which is, it's a lot. So I think this will be a dip in and out one more than a start at the beginning and read all the way through one. Um, but yes, this one also very intrigued, lots of famous people in it. Can't wait to read it. And that brings us to the end of this video. It was very chaotic filming this video, so I hope that the end product is coherent. Um, leave your recommendations in the comments for more LGBTQ plus non-fiction for me to read because I haven't read enough. I want to read more. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely day. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see some more 
videos from me and I will see you next time. Ta-ra for now.